Hello there, welcome back and welcome to part 59, and I mean part 59, I got that wrong in the last episode, but I promise you it is part 59 today. Um, and today I'm going to be working on the lights on the boat deck. Um, so I've already done some of the lights, uh, but I'm going to be working predominantly on the lights on the officers quarters and also the gymnasium today. And specifically what I'm interested in is I'm interested in adding the shrouding that the lights on the boat deck had. So all of the Olympic class liners, and in fact, most ships uh, had these shrouds on their lights. Uh, and they're essentially sort of half covers that just cover one half of the light. And it stops light shining forwards towards the bridge. The reason for this is because when you're on a bridge, you want as little light as possible because any light that's around this area impedes your ability to see forward. If you've ever been inside a room on a winter's night um, with the lights on, you'll know exactly what I mean, because when you try to look out the window, you literally can't see anything at all, because all the light in the room completely obliterates light coming from outside, and you can't see anything. So if there was lots of light on the bridge, people wouldn't be able to see forward. Now, that doesn't really matter in your kitchen on a winter's night. It does matter when you're on the bridge of the largest liner in the world about to sail through an ice field. So what people did was they shrouded their deck lights. So they put the deck lights on, but they just made sure that they only shone aft instead of forward. And that's the effect that I want to try to recreate today. Now, lighting on a model is always a bit of a compromise because I've said it many times before, but, you know, the model's one to 200, but physics is one to one and the lights don't really work as they would on a real ship on a model. So these nano LEDs produce far more light than they would normally. The light penetrates a lot further than it would normally. Uh, it, it's able in some cases to shine through bits of plastic and stuff. It's just very, very difficult to make lights look realistic on a model of this size. But this is an effect that I'm really keen to try to get because I think it will be very, very eye-catching if I can pull it off and if I can make deck lights shine just in one direction. So I've got an idea of what I'm going to do. I've got some brass tubing and what I'm going to do is I'm going to insert the brass tubing into the walls and have it sticking out probably about a millimetre uh, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut half of it off so essentially you have a brass semi-tube sticking out which should hopefully allow the LED which we mounted behind only to shine in one direction. That's the plan. Now I did make a bit of a mistake uh, and initially when I was planning the model I was under the impression that these shrouds were only on the lights on the officers' quarters, the uh, grand staircase and the gymnasium. But apparently, and from looking at photos of Olympic predominantly, but also Titanic, um, the lights with these shrouds actually went as far back as the engine casing. So lights here had them and here and all of the lights here. So I'm going to have to retrofit to this area. And because those lights are already in place, I'm going to have to do a slight workaround, which might not be quite as good, but hopefully will give us a similar effect. Um, but I'll do the full design on this section here. So it's going to be a bit of an experimental video today. Um, if it doesn't work out, maybe you'll never see this, but fingers crossed it does. Without any further ado, let's crack on. So this is the tubing I'm using. Uh, it's made by the same company that I've used for all of the small metal work on the model. Uh, things like the rudder and stuff like that company called Albion Alloys and they're very very good for sort of modeling size metals. Uh, this is a bit of tubing as you can see it's made of brass and it's got a very thin wall uh, and that's about all you can really say about it to be honest. So the hope is that this will block our light. So let's see what we could do with it. Right so as you can see I have now inserted this piece of tubing and you see that I've sort of chopped off half of the end so we've got this sort of crescent shaped cover section. Hopefully if it works it'll be more obvious when the light's on. Uh, on the inside oh, I put some blue tack in just to act as a bit of a light stopper. Let's get rid of that. On the inside, LED is just glued into the tube as normal. So I'm going to pop this on the power supply now and see if it works. 
Right, so this is the first time I'm going to turn on the light. Uh, I put it on some white paper just so we can see the direction that the beam comes out. What I'm hoping for, I might use these sticks to show us, what I'm hoping for is a sort of beam like this, one out like that, and something like this. That's what I'm hoping for, we'll see what we get though. So without any further ado, let's have a look. Hmm. That ain't bad. Let's see on the camera. Hmm. So I'll draw this on the mate on the paper because it's not that obvious. In real life, that's what the beam looks like. There is a bit of light coming over here. Just to interrupt myself for a moment here. Um, I didn't explain this very well when I was recording, um, but the reason I'm drawing with pen is because the camera doesn't pick up the light um, very accurately. Um, so what I'm drawing with the pen uh, represents what you can see with, with, with the eye, um, what you would see if the model was actually in front of you. So there's a array like that, but it is markedly less bright than the light in this cord here. Uh, so that's pretty good really, I'm quite happy with that. Um, when you view the light from this side facing forward, you don't see it. Uh, whereas when you view the light from this side, you do. And that's exactly what I'm after. Um, so I'm quite happy with that. Just to illustrate this last point, uh, I've taken two still photos. Uh, this first one, shows the light looking aft. So imagine you're an officer standing on the bridge looking aft. Uh, the second photo, this one on the screen now, shows um, looking forward. So imagine you're sort of standing amidships looking towards the bridge and you can see that the light is significantly more obvious when you're looking forward than when you're looking aft. Now there's a few corrections that need to be made to this piece uh, to make it accurate to the Titanic. You'll notice, by the way, also that I have now cut off the wheelhouse section so that this fits onto the model with the wheelhouse that I've glued in place already. So the first and most obvious thing is that there was another window here on the starboard side, which was part of Captain Smith's cabins. Uh, so that is an identical window to the ones on the rest of the officer's quarters, but we just need to add another one there. The other thing on the starboard side is there is an additional deck light about halfway down the gymnasium that needs adding in as well. On the back we have two windows and a door with a porthole leading into the grand staircase area. There's also another deck light here. The main issue though is there is a window on the port side that shouldn't be there. So. As you can see on this piece, if I can get the camera in focus, as you can see on this piece, there are two windows here. Um, the expansion joint starts here, I should say, with these two windows close together, and the expansion joint is just after that, comes up along here. This window is correct but there should then be a deck light where this window is. And where that deck light is, there should be another window. So we need to cover this one up and put a deck light in its place. And we need to cut a window here. Otherwise, the part's pretty much ready to go. Um, but there's a few little bits and bobs I want to make sure are correct before we go any further. So to block out this window, what I've first done is I've put some black plastic behind and glued that in place. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some putty, this stuff, I'm going to put that in the window and just smooth it down. And for that, I'm going to use a razor blade. Come on. Oh, this is quite old. So it takes a bit of getting out of the packaging. Okay, that was too much, wasn't it? 
So I applied a bit much there, but I'm not really making the odds. I'm just going to rub it flush like that. There we go. Um, maybe just add a bit more. I'm just going to add a bit more into the top section. Now it is entirely possible that I might have to reapply because sometimes when using things like this kind of putty as stuff dries it can shrink slightly and of course if it shrinks it's not going to quite be flush onto the wall which clearly isn't very helpful. So if that happens it might need to apply a bit more later but this is a good start. So there we go. So I've just cut the hole here for the other window into the captain's cabin. And as you can see, it's pretty rough, but do not be overly concerned because when I put the actual window frame on, it doesn't really matter that the cut is rough because the window frame covers over all of those jagged edges anyway, so you don't really need to worry about it that much. In other news, I've cut out these back sections here to make this section easier to put down onto the area where the compass platform sits. These just sort of stop me having to shove this up really tight against stuff. This will just slot over the top nice and simply. So when I'm cutting out these holes, and again, just bear in mind that Things don't have to be absolutely true. This one looks a bit skew whiff, doesn't it? But if you pop the window frame over the top, it covers all manners of sins, doesn't it? So don't be too concerned about things looking a little bit skew whiff. Uh, what I've done as well, there's a deck light in between these two, which I've cut out. This is the hole for the door, which had a porthole in. So, what I'm doing when I'm cutting these out is I'm marking them up, and I'm not sure if you'll be able to see, you might be able to, but essentially what I've done is I've measured up and I've scored a lower line here, where I want the base of the window to be, an upper line, where I want the top of the window to be, and then I've done a line either side of the window. Uh, and I've derived this from a Titanica Model Maker's Guide, which is a book um, which is very, very good source of information for this. I'll put a photo into the video here, but I'll also put a link in the description to that book, should you wish to get it for yourself. But it is a very good guide and it's been very helpful. Um, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to use a mixture of things like micro files or needle files. So these sort of things. Uh, and also just a craft knife blade to widen out this hole and to get it to this final dimension. So there we are, both of those windows now cut into place. So the only thing remaining to do is this window, but I'm going to have to do that tomorrow because I need to wait for the putty to dry. Welcome to tomorrow. As you can see, the putty did shrink slightly when it was drying, uh, so I'll need to add another layer on top and then sand back. 
So just to mark out the additional windows location, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to score the plastic where the window needs to be. There we have it. And now it's just a case of cutting it out. Right, so I have now changed over the uh, location of the window. So that's where the old window was and it's been filled and I've drilled a hole for the deck light and I've cut a new window hole there. So that's now all done. And in fact, all of the holes on this piece are done. And this is ready now for painting, photo etch edition, light installation and all the rest of it. Uh, which will be done in the next episode. So here endeth the video. Um, I hope that was useful. Um, it's quite a short video today, but I hope that was fairly useful. Um, I'm certainly quite happy with the uh, the lighting effect that I've managed to create there. Um, in terms of getting this part ready for painting, uh, I need to fit the remaining light covers, uh, and needless to say, that is an apocalyptically fiddly process. Uh, so that will take some time. Uh, and I need to add all the other photo etch as well, things like the doors and stuff like that. Um, but that'll all be covered in the next episode. Um, so, uh, as I say, I hope this video was useful. If you've enjoyed it, please do like and subscribe. Uh, if you've got any questions, pop them down below and I'll do my best to get back to you. Uh, if you want to see more regular updates, you can follow on Instagram. Um, and I tend to post more regular pictures and stuff of what I'm up to. Uh, but anyway, I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.